you for coming to the service tonight, coming to the church. I pray your day has been well. Amen. All right. We've got a missionary friend with us tonight, Javelito Fernandez. Amen. And uh, he's going to be uh, doing a presentation tonight of his work. And uh, he'll be letting us all know a little bit more about him. And he's got some materials that we're going to hand out once he gets started with the presentation. He's also going to bring, be uh, bringing a, a special tonight, singing special. He's brought his guitar, and so I'm looking forward to hearing what he's got for us tonight. Amen. But anyway, I appreciate you all being here, and I pray that the Lord's been blessing you today. Amen. And I uh, hope your families are doing well and all. So let's go ahead and pray. And we appreciate the Merrills being back with us. I told Drew I'm going to have to, if he keeps growing that beard out, we're going to have to reintroduce him because you all won't know who he is. But he just keeps on letting it grow. It looks, he looks very distinguished with a beard, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> looks like a man. All right. Says the other guy with a beard. <laughs> Some of us are secure even without a beard. <laughs> I'm just picking. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> all right. Well, on that note, let's pray together. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for being able to gather together here in this place and being able to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we do praise you, Father, for the blessings you've bestowed upon us today. We thank you for the sunshine today. We know we've got a cold week ahead of us. But Lord, thank you for this day to start the week off, this wonderful day that we've had, warmth and sunshine and just all the blessings you've poured out on us today. And we praise you, Father, help us to just notice the blessings of this life, Lord, and that our Father in heaven is a good Father who gives good gifts, uh, better than anything we could receive of someone of this world, Lord. And we thank you for it and we praise you for it. And we ask you to help our service tonight. Please do bless the music, bless the preaching of your word, bless our brother, our missionary here as he presents a little later. And we all also want to ask you, Lord, to take care of Maria. Just her sinuses were acting up tonight, and um, so she's not able to be down here with us. And I've noticed some other faces that are not with us tonight, so I pray for them. I hope they're doing okay. And we just ask you to take care of those who are tuning in through live stream. We pray that everything works well there. And Father, just continue to bless this church and this ministry and help us now, Lord. We need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. If we all take a stand, take your red book, and turn to page 362. Page 362. I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord.
I, I used to help teach kids singing and everything. There's this one song that always makes them happy, makes them smile. You ever heard that? If you're happy and you know it. How many people know that song? Can you sing it with a smile on your face? Can you? No. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I got a smile on you. All right. Well, let's try it. Okay. When you, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. All right. Here we go. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're saved and you know it, then your face will surely show. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. Amen. <laughs> come on up here and help us out with our offering tonight appreciate that brother that was good maybe a trip down memory lane a little bit uh, you know i used to have a busboys class first through third graders and uh, we had some times in there we sure did so anyway appreciate that uh, after the service we'll be putting the plate at the back of the church to take up a special offering for our missionary friend tonight and I encourage everybody to put a little something in the plate just to help him out as he's traveling around on deputation. He told me a few moments ago he's been away from his family for nearly two years uh, because they're back home and he's been on deputation raising support to plant churches down uh, where he's from. And so what a work. Could you imagine doing that yourself? And so it's a, this is a great opportunity for us to be a blessing to this this individual and to help him uh, as he continues to look to do the will of God with his life. So let's just remember that at the end of the service, don't put it in now because we won't know one way or the other. So at the end of the service, we'll put a plate at the back of the church and you can put something in there to help Brother Fernandez. All right, now uh, let's go ahead and um, take up our offering tonight and I encourage you to give as the Lord's blessed you and lay it on your heart to give tonight. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you again, Lord, for this great opportunity to pray. Thank you for the privilege that we have because of our Savior, that through the Son we can come to you, Father. And Lord, even now as we think about what we could give concerning tithes and offerings, Lord, I see people who seem as though they've been blessed in their lives. And Lord, as much as we've been blessed, I pray that we'll learn to give back to you, that you can take and use it uh, for the furtherance of the gospel, for the glory of our Savior. So bless now as only you can, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. the red hymnal and as we stand we'll sing O come all ye faithful O come all ye faithful oh I didn't sing 388 I'm sorry <laughs> we'll sing all three stanzas <laughs>
Fernandez, I'm going to go ahead and have you do your special song, and then afterwards we'll move into your presentation, okay? All right. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you doing that. Amen. I'm Jubilito Fernandez. Good evening, church, and thank you for allowing me to stand behind a this pulpit and to welcome me here uh, since birth we, do, uh, we don't know each every one of us but the only thing I know we are saved by the one Savior Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and the Bible says make a joyful noise and I'm doing right now a noise <laughs> I hope it would be a blessing to you there is coming a day when no heartache shall come No more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore What a day, glorious day that will be day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more virus over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day! What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see And I look upon His face, the one who saved me by His grace When He takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land What a day, glorious day that will be Amen. All right. Brother Fernandez, you can go ahead and come up here, and he's going to get his presentation ready behind us. What's that? Yeah, if you don't mind, get the lights. And uh, Brother Fernandez is going to get his presentation ready here. Um, here's what we have to do. But, uh, and, okay. And uh, then afterwards, he'll be speaking a little bit more about himself. And what I want to do, brothers, uh, your handouts, I'm going to go ahead and pass those out while you're doing your presentation. Are those at your seat? Yes, we're waiting. I will pass it. Oh, okay, that'll work out good. Appreciate you. All right. We'll get out of the way.
Uh, good evening once again. Mm, as you can see, ma, the power, what do you call that? Uh, PowerPoint. PowerPoint uh, presentation. Uh, there's a lot of picture and uh, it's all about kids and children. Uh, for 18 years, I grew up in a Roman Catholic teaching and practice and my parents are devoted in that church, in that religious uh, belief. And they taught us how, how to be a good person and to inherit the salvation, the so-called salvation. But there's no 100% chances. If you are a Roman Catholic, you know this, uh, what I mean, because uh, be, uh, a man, if he die, they need to bring that to the priest and the priest will pray for that for his soul so there's no guarantee that his soul will be in heaven until the priest will say so it means the priests are the the one who will determine or uh, judge if he is going to heaven or is still on the purgatory they they taught us about the purgatory also uh, if, you, if you are not uh, familiar with that uh, for 18 years, I grew up on that kind of belief. And I thank the Lord because there's one missionary. That's why uh, I'm so grateful for the churches here in America. When I'm visiting churches and I know that there are, that church are uh, still believe in mission and supporting a Filipino missionary, I'm so grateful for that because of one missionary go to my place and try to share the gospel of Christ every villages every barangays we call it barangay in our place and the Lord uh, reached me through that kind of uh, ministry because of one missionary that obeyed the calling Amen. to go and for those people who prayed for him for the church that supported him I'm so thankful about that for that and because of that missionary I got saved for 18 years, I know I don't know about the Bible, and I was invited to a, a to a church. Uh, they call it Baptist Church. It's so uh, not familiar for me because my usual uh, place or church to go is the Roman Catholic Church. So I'm so uh, hesitant to attend on that uh, church, but my friends are too eager, and so. Uh, try always to uh, invite me to attend to their church and one day I I say yes to that invitation I attend to the church Gloryland Baptist Church that is my home church uh, and one one man stood up and shared to me the, the Bible the Word of God and I thought to myself that I am saved because I'm a good person but the Bible says he read the, the Romans wrote the first verse that he read to me Romans chapter 3 verse number 10 there is none righteous no not one oh I thought that I'm good person and he said then he follow up the verses 323 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God verse uh, 23 chapter 6 for the wages of sin is death and I thought I am saved but I was separated because I'm a sinner. And the only thing that can save my soul is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's by His grace. And I thank the Lord for that day, August 20, year 2000, I got saved. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I'm a two-year uh, drunkard. Every day I drink a lot. And uh, sometimes I fell on the the street and my friends will take me to to my home because I'm I was under influence of uh, alcohol for two years I've been uh, pr uh, asking to myself I uh, always promising to myself that I will not drink anymore when I was under the influence but tomorrow I will I will drink again but thank the Lord because he saved me and he changed my life and not only that, he called me to the full-time ministry. As I said, all the pictures are more of 
for the children because in the Philippines you just only bring one pack of candies they will gather on you they will get candies from you you don't need to invite them as they can see your candies they will go on you and they try to get candies and that's the opportunity to share the gospel and it is easy for to reach the children because one they have a tender heart in the Philippines there's a lot of children you can share the gospel and they will listen eagerly because if they don't listen to you you don't give them a candy and that's the Amen. that's the deal so they will listen properly they will listen eagerly to you and that's the opportunity to share the gospel to them first they have a tender heart second you can say hitting two bird uh, two bird in one stone because some of the children they brought their parents so while sharing the gospel to the children their parents are there you can share them also the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ why children you can say why children because as I said for 18 years there's no one taught me about the Bible just only I know the sacraments of the Roman Catholic just to do a good thing good things for me to inherit the salvation so the Lord put a burden in my heart that I will try to reach those children at their young age to teach them about the Bible about the Lord Jesus Christ the Savior and the only Savior that can save their soul and uh, we have a called public transportation in the Philippines called tricycle uh, you can see it um, supposed to be mm. it's not working <laughs> ah. we call it tricycle and that tricycle will the total passenger should be or must be six passenger only including the driver so it should be five and the driver is the six man on that uh, public transportation and every sunday i bring those kids to the home church to the glory and baptist church and you know what how many children that i brought in the tricycle 13 13 and we will travel four to five miles and you know the Filipino driver are idiots and stupid the traffic sign the traffic law is not it's just only a design for for us so the Lord um, put a burden in my heart that I will not bring them to the church because I'm risking their lives while we are in the road I'm traveling I'm I'm driving just only five miles an hour so that it takes us 30 minutes on the road while those 13 children on my tricycle so if there's some accident will happen the blame is on me and on the church also so the burden in my heart that I will not bring the children anymore to the church but instead I will bring the church to their village so we have a village work right there in the morning my my wife teaching the children in the evening I do the Bible studies for the parents the grandma and grandpa of the those children and the young people and the elders they are there every night and in the morning my wife go to the children's center or children ministry so that's the way we uh, uh, divided the labor and I'm here in the United States taking two-year course for advanced biblical studies I don't know why you God uh, the Lord brought me here but the only thing I know this for his own glory and uh, as uh, pastor Tim said I'm here also to raise support uh, you know what is the difference between our money one dollar for you is a sweet tea in McDonald's right but in the Philippines, that one dollar is one kilo of rice. For you, a drink. For us, is a meal. 
for you is a drink but in the Philippines that one dollar you can feed one family in the whole day so that's the difference of our money you are blessed by God and we are here not begging but we are looking partners in the ministry uh, as you the Filipino are <coughs> can't live without rice mm -hmm. uh, as I said always to the churches that I visited uh, there are three M that you brought in the Philippines one is the military you sent General Douglas MacArthur to our place when we are under the uh, colony of Japanese mm -hmm. you send him and I will never forget his statement I shall return mm -hmm. he, he brought it near on our province that is from Bataan mm -hmm. and then second M you brought it missionary you sent missionary and that's why I'm here today because of one missionary you sent it to the Philippines third and last McDonald's <laughs> you sent McDonald's and McDonald's in the Philippines they're always rice they're always offer a rice here just only french fries <laughs> there rice so if you will consider the the ministry and i know that the lord uh, planned this and i know that it's not an accident that i am here today yes, and thank you pastor Tim. Sure. thank you church god bless you <coughs> As our brother was talking about uh, those in the Philippines not being able to go without rice, and he mentioned sweet tea, I was thinking about some southern people that can't go without their sweet tea. Yeah, not myself. I'm an unsweet tea kind of guy, and I know a lot of you say yuck, but I know some of you, you love your sweet tea as much as uh, our brother here might love his rice. So anyway, appreciate that, brother. Thank you for the good presentation. And uh, now I know how to get all you to do what I say. I'm going to give each one of you a piece of candy, <laughs> right? So I need a big, although Adelia has eaten all of my candy up here, so I'm going to have to refill some of that. But Anyway, appreciate that good song, brother, and appreciate everything, and I apologize for any, any busted eardrums from our uh, quality up here with our audio, just one of those things. But anyway, it was good. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. And I want all of you to be in prayer about Brother Fernandez and uh, the support that he needs as well as the ministry that he's involved with and he's given you some material that you can read. And so I encourage you, don't just set it aside, don't lay it you know, in the car or throw it away after you leave, but actually spend some time reading over it and get to know the family a little bit. And uh, then we will, um, we will readjourn you know, everything and bring it back together later on as we pray over this and see what the Lord wants to do for Brother Fernandez, okay? All right, let's go to the book of Jonah tonight. Book of Jonah, as we continue our study um, concerning the lessons from Jonah. We're going to be in chapter 1 tonight. We're probably not going to finish this message, and that's okay. It's a little, it's a little bit lengthy. So we'll just get started, and I'll try to cut us off right at 7. Um, do we have choir practice tonight, brother? Okay, so we might... No? We'll have to check with everybody, make sure everybody's up for it too. So we might have some choir practice a little bit later. But anyway, let's go to the book of Jonah if you hadn't gone already. Now, you know, with the book of Jonah, I was noticing towards the end of the book, and I know you've probably seen it before too, uh, this book is, is really there to showcase the grace of God. At the end of it, Jonah even said that he knows that the Lord is gracious and merciful and kind. And though the Lord is also the judge, and He was going to judge the nation of Nineveh, notice what he, how He actually responded once they repented. He was gracious at the end of the book. Now, throughout the book, you can divide it into two parts. I've already told a lot of you this. But the first two chapters, you kind of see it's focused on Jonah, and it's focused on even that great fish. Second two parts of the book, you're going to see it's focused on that great city, as well as the people of Nineveh. As you progress through it, you see the grace of God throughout. You see the grace of God in Jonah's life. You see the grace of God in, for the city of Nineveh. And you just constantly see the Lord moving by way of grace, which He didn't need to do. First two lessons we've learned so far is, number one, when God speaks, you better listen. 
God had spoken to Jonah and told him to rise up and to go, and Jonah did rise up, but he went the opposite way. Now, the second lesson we learned about was that you cannot run from God. And that was what Jonah was trying to do. He was trying to run from God. He thought if he went down to Joppa, took a ship out to Tarshish, over 2,000 miles away from his destination he was supposed to be at, which was Nineveh, that somehow he could get away from God. But the truth is, no matter where you go, anywhere at all, it doesn't matter. You'll never escape God. And everyone gives account of themselves in the end. And so Jonah, he also had to learn that lesson. Now let's go to verse 4 tonight, chapter 1, and we'll get into our third lesson from Jonah. Verse 4, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay, and he was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, Every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Tonight's lesson, what we're going to talk about uh, for lesson three, is going to be all sin has consequences. All sin has consequences consequences. And you look at me and you say, Pastor, you mean all sin? Yes, all sin. What about even the little sins? Even the little sins have consequences. See, all sin has consequences. The Bible says in Numbers 32, 23, be sure your sin will find you out. Over in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, it says, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. All sin has consequences, no matter how big, no matter how small. You know, Jonah's sin was just simply that of rebellion. Jonah was just not doing what he was supposed to do. He wasn't a drunkard, as our brother mentioned, you know, for two years he experienced that before he was saved. Jonah wasn't a murderer. Jonah wasn't a thief. Jonah wasn't a lot of the more wicked things we could think about. Jonah was just a rebel, and he was a quiet one at that. He quietly went down to Joppa to find a ship out the Tarshish. He quietly worked his way down into the bottom of the ship to fall asleep and ignore what was going on around him. As the mariners were above him, men who were lost and on their way to hell, and yet he had the truth, and there he hid, tucked away in the bottom of the boat. And yet his sin, though it wasn't so grotesque and obvious to the world, it was nonetheless, it was very repulsive to God. This sleeping sinner was more dissatisfying to God than all those ignorant sinners that were up on the top of that boat, calling out and crying out to their gods. Because see, here's the thing. Verse 4 shows us God didn't send out the tempest and the storm because of the mariners who were crying out to idols. He sent it out because of a backslidden believer. And so tonight we're going to talk about all sins have consequences. So let's ask the Lord to help us tonight as we go through the message. Father, we thank you again for our brother uh, here, Brother Jovelito Fernandez and his work and what he's presented tonight. And we pray you would give our church wisdom concerning support for our brother. But Father, as we approach you tonight, and um, I pray, Lord, even right now that our hearts are tender to you and what you have for us tonight. That, Lord, we would understand how this message can be applied in our own lives and how the truths of Scripture, Lord, should convict us, change us, and challenge us to do better, to be more like our Savior. We ask you for your help tonight. We ask you for the presence of the Holy Spirit as we go through the message tonight. And we pray, Lord, that you would be our guide, would be our teacher, and would help us to, to achieve the will that you desire to achieve in this place tonight. Thank you, Lord, now. Please bless in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, Jonah here, his sin of rebellion, which was a quiet one at that, we see that it has impacted not only his life, but it's impacting others around him. See, all sin has consequences to it. And where we're going to start is we're going to start with verse 4. That sin, first off, the consequence of sin is that sin robs us of fellowship with God. Look at verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. This is not a God who's trying to fellowship with his child. This is not a God who says, Oh, Jonah, I love you so much. Let me snap that ship in half and let it sink to the bottom of the ocean. 
This is a God who is, who is upset at this rebellious believer. This is a God who has said that, Jonah, you have turned your back on me, you've rebelled, and you've gone away from me, and therefore now there's chastening to follow. See, with Jonah, whenever he had let this sin into his life, he had lost the fellowship uh, that he had with God before he had allowed this sin into his life. Over in the book of Job, you don't necessarily have to turn there. I'm just going there really quick. In chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. See, the assuring thing to Jonah was that he was being chastened. How wonderful is that when you are a rebel that God chastens you? But the times when God is quiet, those are the times you should really, uh, your ears should perk up. You should be on high alert. Because a God who loves you and a God who's moving and is concerned about where you are spiritually is a God who will chasten you. And in Jonah's, in Jonah's life here, we see that the Lord sends out this great wind into the sea, this mighty tempest, not because of the fact that they were in good relations, but because the fellowship had been broken because of sin. And Jonah here was guilty of sinning against God. And, and the thing is, when we're robbed of that fellowship, what we also forfeit is we forfeit a number of things we read about in Scripture. We forfeit joy. Jonah didn't have any joy. That's why he was hiding down at the bottom of the ship. He was removing himself from everyone because he was miserable because of the conviction of this wickedness that he had not uh, dealt with concerning God and, and the fellowship there. He had also forfeited his peace. You know, God promises peace to his children, a peace that passes all understanding when our eyes are set upon him. And yet here Jonah hides down at the bottom of the ship in darkness, sleeping it away, trying to sleep it off. And really the problem was that sin had robbed him of his fellowship with God. A child of God, as Brother Butch was even pushing us to sing that children's song earlier, and I think it was great. You know, we need to smile a little more when we come to church. But a child of God should be the happiest person on this planet. A Christian should be the happiest person on this planet. But yet, what we see a lot of times, especially now, I think it's almost like God is sort of bringing to, to the surface those who uh, sort of lacked real faith in Him. But what we see now are a lot of people overwhelmed with fear and, and pain and suffering and, and anxiety and worry and, and distress and discouragement, all these things. And all that's kind of coming to the surface, but really in the end of it, a child of God should be the happiest person on earth. You know who the Creator is. You know who the Savior is. Uh, you don't have to worry about hell. No matter even if you died here, you know where you go, you go immediately into the presence of God. That's a great thing to, 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 that should be a great encouragement for the believer to continue on, to go even into a mission field of some sort, or to go across the street and share the gospel, or to continue just laboring generally in the ministry. But all of that, it should be because of that wonderful joy that we receive from the Lord. But Jonah here, because of his sin, he, he lacked fellowship with God. It robbed him of that fellowship. He was convicted. You know what else it does? It robs you of spiritual direction. You know, when you don't have fellowship with God, it's, it's very hard to get spiritual direction from God. The Holy Spirit is the one who guides us in all truth. And often when we have sin in our life that is left unconfessed and undealt with, you, you, you are forfeiting your spiritual direction because you've already grieved the Holy Spirit because you're not right with God. The Holy Spirit's never going to break fellowship with God. So if you break fellowship with God, then you're breaking fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That means you, you forfeit the spiritual direction that He offers. Jonah here, he, that's why he's where he is. God didn't tell him to go down to, Jonah, uh, to, down to Joppa. God did not tell him to head out to Tarshish. God did not tell him to go hide down in the bottom of that boat and avoid the men who were on the top. If God were in all this, God would have said, why don't you tell everybody about me, Jonah? Why don't you let everybody know who Jehovah truly is, who the one and only true God is? Why don't you stand up on the, on the highest point of that boat and you just proclaim the wonderful truth that there is only one God, not many gods. But see, none of that happened. You know why? Because sin had robbed him of his fellowship. And sin had sent him down into the bottom of a boat away from God, hiding away, thinking he could hide himself from the Almighty. And yet we see the Almighty has come after him with this storm. So there's no spiritual guiding of the Holy Spirit, meaning that uh, for one, your Bible reading suffers. Have you ever noticed that about yourself whenever you, 
find yourself in some unconfessed sin, whether it's bitterness or anger or lust or whatever it is, you put, you know, you can fill in the blank, however it suits you. But have you ever noticed that Bible reading is not nearly as rich and wonderful when that sin is not being dealt with? You know why? Because you forfeited your spiritual direction. The reason why the Bible is sweet and wonderful now to the believer is because you have the divine author right there beside you helping you to understand the Word of God. And if sin is there, you've been robbed of the fellowship and therefore you forfeit the spiritual direction for a time. Another one is your prayer life. How, how rich is your prayer life right now? I'm going to take a sip of water if you don't mind. How rich is your prayer life right now? See, your prayer life suffers whenever you leave sin unconfessed. When you don't have those short accounts with God, that those short moments where you're constantly just right there making sure all things are right, your prayer life will suffer because it is so hard to go boldly into the throne of grace when you've got a whole lot of baggage that you're not willing to bring before God. So you've got to confess. You've got to make it right. You need to cast all those things at the Lord's feet and not try to carry those burdens through life on your own. Some other things would be spiritual growth. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people, whether it's door knocking at the jail ministry, at other churches, even, even people that have passed through here. None of you all because you are all just so wonderful and I'm not pointing a finger. But I've talked to individuals who they're not, they're not really growing spiritually anymore. They've, they've hit a stopping point. And really, when I say they've hit a stopping point, when you stop growing spiritually, you're not really stopping. What you're doing is you're just going backwards because there's no stagnant moment in the Christian life. You're either going to regress backwards so far that you become hardened and cold and empty when it comes to your love for God, or you're going to progress forward and you're going to get closer and closer to the Lord. But there's no middle ground. There's no stagnant period with God. So these individuals, when they're sin in their life and, the, and they, they're robbed of that fellowship, what happens is there's no spiritual growth anymore. So how has your spiritual growth been in your Christian life lately? Has it been rich? Have you been growing leaps and bounds and, and you just feel like, boy, I could just take on the world? Or has it been kind of slow? You know, just almost like a snail's pace. I think I would do like Paul said and examine myself. Make sure all things are right with God. Make sure I'm not being robbed of some wonderful fellowship because the truth is God wants to grow us. And God knows we have a limited amount of time here. For some odd reason, we think we're going to live forever and we put everything off to tomorrow. Let me wait till then. Let me wait till then. But God says, boast not thyself of tomorrow for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. It could be that today is your last day. Have you gotten all things right with God? Or have you achieved what God wants you to achieve? Or, or are you still waiting for tomorrow to come? God, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. I believe even Jonah thought, well, once all this passes, God will send somebody else. After he destroys Nineveh, I'll then get back right with God. So he was putting it off instead of realizing God had a great work for him to do. Now, again, another part of this robbed fellowship, that, as I was thinking through this, that I believe happens is that we no longer have anticipation for the coming of the Lord. A child of God who is backslidden, who has been robbed of fellowship, they're not thinking of the imminent return of Christ. They're not watching and praying as Scripture talks about and looking for the coming of our Savior. What they've done is they've settled themselves They've, they've built them a firm foundation here in this place, and they've settled themselves in this life. And they're not looking for eternity. They're looking for what they can gain right here. But see, the truth is, if you go and labor for the next 10 to 15 years just to get what you're trying to get, what happens if the Lord comes back tomorrow? See, your focus was way out there, and little do you know, Christ is imminent. His return is imminent. See, whenever we've, we're robbed of that fellowship and sin is in our life, we stop anticipating the coming of the Lord. We're not on the edge of our seats anymore. I'll tell you what, if, if Christians were on the edge of their seats really looking for the coming of our Savior, uh, tracks would fly off the track rack. People would be constantly bombarded with great witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. People would be going out, and when we have testimony time, people would be standing up saying, I talked to this person, I talked to that person, I prayed for this person, I prayed for that person, I saw God move here, I saw God move there, and there'd be all this great work because you know what? We would be thinking that our Lord is coming back. There's, there's something we're anticipating, and therefore we want to do all that we can do before He gets back so that He's pleased with our lives. 
Now, Jonah here, he had sin in his life and he wasn't anticipating um, any of these things. He had no joy, had no peace. And he also, and a child of God who's backslidden would too, he also lacked boldness. He wasn't bold any longer. He was not a witness any longer. Uh, there was no assurance. He was cold, he was convicted, and he was miserable. And therefore he hid in the bottom of the boat, hoping that it, all, it would all pass over. Now that's our first part, which is that sin robs us of fellowship. I'll give you the second one, and then we're going to hit pause, and I'm going to finish this message later because we're already at 7 o'clock. Let's go to verse 5. So verse 4, the Lord has sent out a storm. He's trying to get Jonah's attention again. Verse 5, then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. Secondly, what we find about these consequences of sin is that sin destroys the lives of those around us. The mariners are up top and they're in fear. They're crying out to false gods who cannot secure their eternal destination. And a man who actually has the truth hides himself down in the bottom of the boat and not even concerned about those who are perishing up above. Now you think that and you apply it, you think about that and apply it in 2020. See, if our gospel is hidden, it's hidden to those who are lost. If we sit and we maintain in this little area, sleeping away in Southside Baptist Church, this building here, and we never realize that there are many lost souls out there who are already experiencing the storms of this life, and soon we'll see death and we'll be forever lost in hell. And we're not willing to rise up to go out there and to actually bring the message that we have to them. Well, then we're no better than Jonah. And see, sin, what it does is, for one, it destroys the lives of those around us. See, our sin of rebellion is going to contribute to some poor soul slipping off into hell. Now, in the end, everyone gives account of themselves. And we know that those individuals would give account of their own selves because they had to receive Christ just like you and I had to. But the Lord has left us here in this place right now to be the ambassadors for Jesus Christ and to go out with the gospel and to let others know about the Lord Jesus Christ and to see them saved and added to the family of God. And how many are there out there who are crying out to their false idols and all they need is just one person to get up out of that bed, stop sleeping, and get up on the top deck and proclaim truth. You see? See, sin, even of rebellion, you may not be a horrible person. You've probably been saved just about all your life. But if you're not a witness for Christ and you're not doing anything with all the wonderful tools that God has given us, the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the Son of God to begin with, and the wonderful promises that we, that we have, well, you're no better than Jonah sitting down in the bottom of that ship watching all of these mariners perish above him as he tries to hide away until he gets to the end of his journey. I'm going to leave you with that tonight. But let's think about how sin has consequences, not only in our lives, but also in the lives of others. And sin will, in fact, destroy others as well as destroy ourselves. And so we have to learn to have these short accounts with God, to confess quickly, hey, we're weak. We know we're weak. God knows we're weak. He knows our frame. He knows that we're but dust. We are weak vessels, but He's the Almighty One. And in His strength, I can do all things. As, as Paul said, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So maybe tonight what we need to do is call on the strength of God again. Lord, forgive me that I've been asleep in the bottom of that boat. And help me now to walk up those steps, to stand on that top deck, and to pro proclaim that wonderful good news that Jesus saves. Let's go ahead and bow our heads tonight and, and have a moment here of, of uh, meditation on the message. I'm going to ask Blake to go ahead and make his way up here. And as he's making his way up here, we'll go ahead and stand to our feet, get the blood flowing a little bit. Heads bowed, eyes closed. How about you tonight? How about you? Are you asleep in the bottom of the boat? Are you, are you a Jonah trying to hide away from what God's called you to do, which is just to be a witness for Christ? Would you be willing to get up out of that bottom 
area out of the bottom of that ship tonight. Make a promise with God. Hey, God, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm going to stand on that top deck and I'm going to proclaim your truth again. If that's you tonight, the altar's open. You're welcome to come down here and do business with God tonight. The Lord is joyful and excited when we're willing to cast all of our cares on Him because He cares for us. Sometimes our cares can just simply be fear, can be anger, can just be laziness. Let all that stuff fall at the feet of Jesus and let Him deal with it tonight. Is that you tonight? What kind of witness are you? The altar's open. Won't you come tonight? You know, maybe there's some sin in your life that you've not confessed. All sin has consequences. It's robbing you of fellowship with your God. Why don't you confess that sin tonight? Make things right with the Lord. Blake's going to play one more time through. The altar's still open. Father, we thank you for our time together tonight. We thank you for our brother and his message. And we do praise you for the message tonight from your word. And Lord, we just uh, want to ask you to take what's been preached tonight, Lord, these seeds that have been sown. May they take root in our hearts and our lives. And may they help us to be better for, your, for, for you, Lord, for the cause of Christ. Better witnesses, better ambassadors, and the light and salt that we need to be in this world. Father, be with us. Go with us this week. Help us to honor you as... Uh, as we strive to be bold witnesses for our Savior. Thank you now, Lord. We praise you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Which is going to make his way up here. I think he's going to close us with a song, and then I'm not quite sure about the choir practice, but he will say more. Yeah, he will. He will. Is that me or you? Oh, the order serves. Okay. All right. All right. Amen. Appreciate y'all coming. I'm going to be back at the back door. Brother Billy's going to have the plate back there for Brother Fernandez, and I'm going to have him go ahead and stand back that way as well so you can all uh, just let him know you're praying for him, and um, appreciate you all coming tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, we do have these papers up here uh, as far as everybody's contact information, so if you'd like one, make sure you grab one of those as well before you leave tonight. Amen. All right, we'll turn to page 81. We'll sing Just As I Am. We'll sing the first verse only. <laughs> missionaries going all across the world dear Lord to bring your word to them dear Lord and we pray your holy name for them for all the heartache and everything that they got to go through 
Dear Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for a wonderful night. Pray that you be with us, bring us back to the next appointed time. And all these things we do give thanks, and we ask these things in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If we could, I'd like to have just a few minutes of your time for choir practice. Thank you.